We are in a really unique position right now where we host a national championship. But the reality of it is, there's a lot of work in front of that. And work that we don't want to dismiss or overlook. The guys, coaches, the staff, everything, like we're bringing everything we got. It's a time to up it. You know, it's, it's the last sprint of the marathon. I want to be a three-time OUA champion. And once we do that, move on to nationals. As long as we maintain our composure and hopefully health, I think I have a pretty good shot at the championship. We set our goals at the beginning of the year. Goal number one was to secure as much home court advantage through the playoffs as possible. You do that through the regular season. Then we want to win an OUA championship. Then we want to win a national championship. So those progressive goals are still there, but our first goal hasn't been achieved yet. Make sure when we get on 0-0, zero, zero, you guys are ready to roll. Take care of your business tonight, right? Yeah. Thank you. at home for the McMaster Marauders as they look to go undefeated in the regular season. And for Dave Preston, his 21st year behind the Marauder bench. The consistent work we put in and the consistent effort and practice to closing out sets, closing out games, paying attention to the little details. And so far this year, we've been able to close out a lot of games. And the perfect season continues for the McMaster Marauders. They'll improve to 16 and 0. They have four more games to conclude their season. And so we've got to secure these last four matches. And you can look at the standings and you can do all the math. I'm not a big math guy. I think we need to put ourselves in position. That's not true, I am a big math guy. I'm not a big math guy when it comes to standings. I don't like to play the game of, well, we only need one more to secure. You play every match to win it. Every match you play, you play to win it. And we have to make sure that we send that message and adhere to that message as we move that forward. Live from Old Maple Leaf Gardens, it's Senior Night at the MAG as the undefeated McMaster Marauders roll into town in what is a virtual must win for the home side. This is a huge game. Uh, it's been a unique week in terms of our preparation with illness and injury. So we've got to manage some stuff down the stretch tonight and I need your full attention and support throughout those moves. So if you're on the floor, you give it. If you're not, you support it. Make sure that we're capable of moving those pieces around and not missing our rhythm because of it. Yes, the McMaster Marauders are certainly a tough opponent. 18-0, undefeated. They've dropped just 11 sets all year, Alex. And the TMU Bulls take the first set and hand the McMaster Marauders just their 12th set loss on the year. They take it 25 to 18. The Team U Bowl doing the unthinkable. And the Bowl takes set two and go up two to nothing over the undefeated Marauders. And you know, even though they're up two nothing, the Marauders are battle tested. The unthinkable is happening. Shake, King, oh, what a recovery, Lexi Rabbit! Fujisawa, Rikosi rejected, rejected! And the TMU Bulls and their first loss to the Marauders on the season. It was a game they needed to have, they must have, and they do it in three sets. They take down the McMaster Marauders, their first loss on the year, and T. It's the 
first game we've lost in two years, so I feel like everyone was pissed off. But the biggest thing that I kind of realized after a winning streak doesn't mean shit. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> the next game is not guaranteed. It doesn't mean that you've been winning for two years that you're going to win the next one. That's 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 just that's fairy tales. It doesn't exist. Every game is important, and every game's going to be different. And there's also there's always going to be the possibility for us to lose. When we talk about going out and making those plays down the stretch, like we have to go and and get it. We have to go and make those plays. We definitely just let the game come to us tonight and it seemed like everyone was looking to everyone else to do something about it but no one was going to seize that opportunity it's tough you know um, when we meet at the beginning of the year we talk about our team goals and we we have three major team goals every season and going undefeated is not one of them but when you get to 18 and 0 with two games to close it out and you think of all the circumstances and being that it's Dave's last year you know like what a story that would have been to go 20 and 0 um so yeah that first with that first loss against TMU that was tough like undefeated season out the window right there and I, I've said to our guys a lot of times um, winning causes amnesia all right you forget how much hard work has gone into putting the record in behind you and you know, so we, we have to continuously, in my opinion, we have to continuously remind ourselves of, we got here because of this and let's make sure that we continue on that path, but keep adding to it a little bit more. I mean, the team we played, played great. They had a home court advantage. They definitely used that. They, they caught us uh, slacking in a few elements. Uh, and yeah, they totally used their opportunity to, to win with us and secure the playoffs. So um, all I can say is congratulations to them. Great finesse play there, but it does look like McMaster. Oh. And Maxime Graton is down. Immediately grabbed for that ankle after that last play. Receiving some attention at the moment. The ankle was just the cherry on top, you know? Just that last game before playoff starts. Some difficult scenes there as he sold out to try to keep that play alive for his side. As we see the replay here. Yeah, as soon as he goes down, grabs for that ankle. But in the moment, um, it was just kind of like my year's over. You know, after all this time of working and trying to figure out my stuff with my mental health, my stuff with, I sprained the right ankle twice. Uh, I messed up my knee at the beginning of the year. My shoulders like were hurting. Um, after going through all of that and figuring out most of it, you get that, you know, so that was, When I saw Max go down, I was, I mean, obviously I felt, I felt sorry for him, just like pain and not being able to play in the next couple of matches. And after seeing that injury happen, I was like, oh, he's probably gone and we're not going to see him at Nationals. He's definitely an important piece to our puzzle as well. Um, he's been really good for us this year. The tremendous athlete, and the tremendous person that he is, um, to the unknowing eye, you wouldn't think anything more of it. All right. Uh, I'm a type 1 diabetic and my story of playing is a roller coaster, I guess. Sports really kind of hasn't, like a physical activity has an influence on your blood sugar, a very big one. And your blood sugar reacts differently to physical activity depending on where it's at and then depending on what you ate, how you slept last night, what you ate the day before, like there's just an um, insane amount of variables. There's not a day that's the same at all. It happened last year in a game, you know? It happened this year, I couldn't play volleyball. I couldn't play against Long Beach because my blood sugar was too high. It's really important, especially for a diabetic, to understand that these things don't happen because you want them to. They're not in your control. It's entirely just, man, like the amount of stuff that you can't control, like your hormones, your adrenaline, all that stuff that has an effect on your blood sugar, you just can't control it, right? So in high performance setting where you, you're nervous before a game, you don't know how your body's going to react. So you just have to 
constantly check, 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 check during the game, before the game, after the game to see what's going to happen. And sometimes it's going to go go good, and sometimes it's going to go pretty bad. The stuff that he has to deal with is very, very different than a, a regular student athlete. The way he handles it, if you weren't really looking, you might not notice. But once you start to notice, you're like, wow, that's pretty impressive. At this stage, I don't really see it hindering his development. I, you know, I don't, I haven't seen it as a limit of, well, if he didn't have this issue, he'd be so much better. He's really good, really good, and he has this issue. So I don't see it as a, as a limit for him. I see it as a, yeah, I'm doing this with diabetes. <laughs> Max is, is just one of my good buddies on the team. Uh, as I'll start there. Um, his drive, um, like playing with him, aside from sort of being friends off the court is, is, a, is another just really, really cool experience. Yeah, his, his drive and energy in the game is, is always something that I'm, that I'm looking to. Man, he runs hot. Um, and uh, I really, really like that about him. Um, plus, he's, you know, he's very physical and he's very skilled. So, uh, but I do like the way that he carries himself. I think there's, uh, I think there's room for that in our program. Um, and uh, I think he's definitely had a major impact since the day he stepped foot on campus. So the week after um, um, U of T and TMU, we lost these bo both games. The way our team came back was insane. Every single rep we took was intentional and with purpose. Um, everyone was here like 30 minutes early, just working on their bodies, everything, making sure that they'd be ready to practice well. Um, we, we just stick to what we know best, which is working hard. And then that spoke for itself on Saturday. Man, after that second Toronto game, knowing that we had TMU on Saturday, like I was already feeling the pressure like Monday morning. I was like, oh crap, like these guys are coming in here, like we gotta, we gotta show out here. So I thought that was a really good thing because in turn, like every, every minute of every day, I was just thinking about Saturday coming up. And what that helped me to do was just focus on what I was trying to do each day. What reps am I getting in? What am I working on to beat those guys this coming Saturday? We just kind of took care of it from there. Well, the McMaster Marauder men's volleyball team comes in playoffs in 2023 as the number one seed. However, they also come in on a two game losing streak and that is something that's unfamiliar around McMaster parts. And one of those two losses was a three game sweep at the hands of tonight's opponents, the 10 and 10 TMU Bold. So McMaster, they do have to answer questions were they just practicing a little bit of load management with an eye on further prizes? Or is there a little bit of doubt in the minds of McMaster? We will find out next. It's quarterfinal action and a welcome return to the lineup for number 11, Sam Cooper, who has missed some time this year. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's super exciting. Like I've been, <laughs> I've had to be really, really patient uh, this year at, at a number of different points. In that way, it's, it's kind of unique that like I'm coming back now. Oh man, I had a mess. I had a really, really like a smile to my ears uh, the entire, the entire game. Watching him hit his first pipe, you know, just like, yeah, well, Mr. Cooper's back, you know? Well, we all just think like, oh, he's back. That's the first thing that, that went through my mind on Saturday. When he can just kind of help us out and carry us with that level of play, it's, it's so easy for everyone else to just do their job. You know how you're going to do it. Yes, um, energy's up. That's good. That's, I, I love that environment for you. I want you to thrive in this environment. This is, you know, this is, this is what we wanted for you guys. So let's make sure we get out there and take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, lots of things are going to go on. We're going to have to handle a whole bunch of stuff tonight. But quite honestly, uh, you guys are fully prepared for this moment. You know that. You believe in yourself. You trust your teammates. You'll support unconditionally. That's how you're built. I only have three letters for you. L, F, G.
one belongs to McMaster. McMaster 25, TMU 15 in the first set. Set number two coming up next. Real battle here in set number two between these two teams. Ladarski handles it. Fujisawa Cooper. And set number two belongs to the Bulls. They come back and beat McMaster 28-26. We got ourselves a volleyball game here at the Birds Gymnasium. Set number three coming up next on OUA TV. Number three belongs to McMaster as they win 25-14, take a two set to one lead, and have a chance to close out the match in the fourth set after this. <laughs> to finish, Mills and McMaster will advance and they will host the York Lions next Saturday here at the Burridge Gymnasium as they close out TMU in four sets for McMaster. They move on, so the seeds hold to form. McMaster and York, Windsor and Toronto, that is your final four in Ontario men's volleyball. Uh, it's about three hours past my bedtime already, so uh, we, we gotta put this thing to bed. Some really, really good things to, to talk about and to move forward. I thought Ty and Woj were really, really good in the middle tonight. Uh, I, think I, I quick check the stats, but Robbie had 47 assists too. Oh, wow. and, uh, and Matouche did some really good work on the other on the left side of the corner. Oh, We got 11 back in the lineup. It's been a really, really challenging 2022-23 season for him. Sam Cooper is probably one of the most gifted athletes we've had in our program. Um, I think his record speaks for that. Um, definitely one of the, the, the more important pieces on the court when we have him in full health. He's definitely a bit of a cannon, both you know in attack and in the service line. He's definitely a go-to guy for, for Robbie to set to. I mean, he's played volleyball at the highest level in the world, so it just rubs off positively on everybody, and I think he brings everyone's level level up. But Sam Cooper, you know, you, you look at him outside of volleyball and you would not think he's an athlete. You would think he's kind of like a little artsy guy, you know, writing poems, which that's exactly what he does. You know, sometimes he shows up to practice with his little French hat, like tipped to one side with his little glasses that has no lens in it. But I respect the hell out of it, man, because not just being a very interesting human being, he's an incredible athlete. So he's a, he's a good one. He's a good one. Yeah, I remember my dad and I, uh, meeting with Dave in his, in his office. And I mean, at that point in, in my volleyball career, it was really just like, hey, I like doing this. Like Dave kind of laid a lot of things out for me and helping me to see sort of what he saw, I guess. You know, he, he came in from the, from the Mountain Athletic Club here in Hamilton, he's a local guy. I thought it was really, really important that we showed the level of respect to Sam being a Hamiltonian to try and keep him here at McMaster. Um, knowing full well that he had a lot of other opportunities out there, but uh, watching his uh, development with the national team and and uh, playing in the VNL last year. And... He's so special as a volleyball player, but also as a person. He inspires me a lot the way he, like he's one of the very best players, not only in Canada, but in the world. And this guy just doesn't care at all about any attention or like clout per se or anything like that. He doesn't even have an Instagram. He's just so beyond all of that. He just wants to go out there and hoop, so to speak, every day. So I, I personally really admire that about him. Yeah, I know I love it when Sammy serves at me. Our serve machine doesn't go as fast as he can serve it, so you don't really get a chance to pass a serve at like 125 kilometers an hour unless it's Sam Cooper ripping it at your chest. Man, Sam, when Sam Cooper's in the lineup, you know, it's just kind of like, okay, yeah, we got, we got the guy. You know, we, we've got, we, we're not like, we're not a one-man led team. You know, like we just have a very solid lineup. Our depth has been really, really good, which is why we've been able to 
weather some of the adversity that we've been handling. So, yeah, there's just some um, there's just some really good work ethic, coupled by some really good leadership, and then you know that that leads to a, a pretty decent record. Okay. But Milsey, you got game ball tonight. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Brandon has definitely had quite a game last Saturday. Um, he's he's been uh, point scoring a lot for us. He's uh, he's been really an offensive bomb, pretty much unstoppable. Whenever he had one, two, or three blockers on him, he's always been able to score. Quite a, a weapon to have in our arsenal for for the playoffs for sure. Uh, they, they they just they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. They just don't know. Let's put some work in this week. Yes. Boy. When the crowd gets loud and when like the, the stands or bleachers are right like on the edge of the court and everything and you just feel like you feel the support. Just so exciting to play in front of the fans. The level of energy that transferred from the fans to the to the court is uh, of you know I can't put it into words how helpful it is for us. Uh. Well for those who don't know we have some of the best volleyball of I'd say not only in North America, but in the world right here at McMaster. So if that's not a reason enough to, to get out and come support, I don't know what is because what we have here is truly special. I mean, I really am excited for those, for those opportunities and that big energy and packing the Burge and playing at that level against some of the best teams out here and really testing us and seeing where the gaps in our game are and seeing how we can exploit and find gaps in other people's games, which is really just all it's about, all about being a competitor. Seven months, 22 matches has all led to this. The ultimate prize in OUA Volleyball, the Forsyth Cup. Will it be the powerhouse Marauders capturing their unprecedented 12th title, going back to back in the final season with Preston at the helm? Or will it be the upstart Lancers grabbing their first title? A moment many of these Young players have dreamt about their entire life. The ultimate stage in Ontario volleyball at the university level. Of course I want to win, Carl. Of course I want to win. I want to win more than most things in the world. This isn't about me. I'm just sitting in this chair and somebody's going to sit in this chair after. But the truth of the matter is, this is about me trying to help them achieve their goals. You know your game plan, you know your execution of it, you know your communication. You're built for this moment. You know that? Go out there and prove it to yourself. Come on! Oh, we are back! It's a time to up it. You know, it's it's the last sprint of the marathon. We're bringing everything we got. I want to be a three-time OUA champion. Yeah, we just want to play our best volleyball and, and show ourselves in front of the, the big home crowds.
your 2023 Forsyth Cup champions, the McMaster Marauders, and the dream final season for Dave Preston continues. It's a whole team, boys, and I'm very, very proud of each and every one of you uh, as part of this team. Happy but not satisfied, is that what that was? Oh, yeah. oh, Happy oh. but not satisfied, that's where we want to be. But boys, we got a lot of work ahead of us next week, and it's going to be even more fun than that. Okay? Oh, yeah, so yeah, baby. Congratulations on a championship. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of you, and we got more in front of us. Really well done. Yeah. We are. We are.